What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Churchosity Podcast. My name is Heath Brady. And I'm Andrea Brady. And we, once again, are your <laughs> faithful Churchosity Podcast personnel. That's right. Coming at you one more time. <laughs> you know, whenever I do that voice, yeah. I, I feel like mm. in, in my mind's eye, I'm that DJ from the Grease movie. Oh, yes. <laughs> I don't remember what his name was, but he was like, hey, cats and kids. And blah, 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 blah. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Once again, proving that my mother, she might have been right. I should have gone into broadcasting. Uh, yeah, you do have a good voice. <laughs> well, thank you. Well, you're very welcome. <laughs> when I talk like that, I sound like Jack Handy from Saturday Night Live. Welcome. Welcome to Thoughts or whatever it was. <laughs> Oh my gosh, we already digressed and we're only two seconds into the episode, I know, Andy. I know, I know. Oh my goodness. So how's it going, Mr. Brady? Oh gosh, you call me Mr. Brady. I feel like I should be <laughs> clocking in on a time clock somewhere. How am I doing? Yeah. You know, I'm doing well. Okay. It's... Been, it's <laughs> Well, that's good. <laughs> it, it's it's been a rough few weeks, bro. Like like it's it's been a roller coaster. I'll just say. Yeah. And I am just so thrilled. You know, reason number four hundred and thirty four why I love living in Salem, Oregon. Yeah. We live an hour away from the Pacific Ocean. Agreed. You and I got to hop in the car and drive out to the ocean yesterday, and it was so much fun. Like it was so necessary. Um, to just take a day off and get away with you for the day. Mm-hmm. We had some great lunch. Shout out to Moe's. <laughs> Growing up in Seattle, the chowder was all about Ivers. But right. I'm telling you, man, Moe's. It's pretty darn good. Moe's is where it's at. That's and right. this is not. This is an unsolicited advertisement for Moe's. <laughs> Seriously, though, uh, just hanging out out there for the day and... and you know, we had lunch and then we, we grabbed our camping chairs out of the car and walked down to the beach. Yeah. Sat there for oh, a good amount of time. There were king tides. Well, king, yeah, king tides this weekend, man. Yeah. It was nuts they seeing were. those just ginormous waves. And like the, like the ebb and flow of the tide was ridiculous. Yeah. Like one second it was really high and then the next second it was really low and then it was high and then it was low. Yeah, it was really great. You know, I'm, I'm, I've said this before, I'm sure, but I'm one of those weirdos that geeks out over nature. Like, I see God's perfect splendor in nature. Mm-hmm. You know, like if, if I'm on a hike or I'm, you know, I see mountains or the ocean or, you know, whatever it might be. Like, someday we'll go to the Grand Canyon and I'll probably just, like, lose it. <laughs> yeah. But I just see the handiwork of God and... And it just like gets to my very soul. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Yeah. Throughout my life, I've always just felt like there's something about the water. Mm-hmm. And every time I'm at the water, you know, I just feel like I have a great conversation with Jesus. Mm-hmm. And yesterday was no exception. I went down to the water's edge and I just stood there and prayed and talked to Jesus, you know, about what I'm dealing with. And and it was just so neat, you know, mm-hmm. to... To be to just be like enveloped in the presence of God. It's like being baptized all over again. I know that sounds corny, but No, it's not corny. It it's just it's who I am, you mm-hmm. know? I mean, one of the things that I love about one of the many things that I love, I should say, about the Christian faith is that, you know, there's a lot of things that are standard amongst Christians. But the fact that God communicates with us and treats us on an individual level yeah like we are individually knit together in our mother's wombs Mm -hmm. and and that truth god speaks into that truth throughout our whole lives and with me it's it's the water you know just standing there at the water's edge and and talking to the lord and and just really getting an overwhelming sense of his presence Mm -hmm. and 
and knowing like how to pray and and where to walk and what to do next you know that kind of a thing it was, mm-hmm. it was really, like it, it it's one of those moments where i feel like god is my abba you know he's my daddy yeah when i'm down there at the water's edge at the ocean like that and it was really cool mm. and 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 I, i'm so grateful andy that you let me leave you in the camping chair so that i could <laughs> go up there and have that time yeah. alone mm-hmm. but uh yeah so i'm i'm doing well you know, the last few nights I've slept really well. Yeah. Um, there's a calmness in my spirit. Mm-hmm. And, and it's because of how awesome and wonderful God is. So, yeah, I'm doing well. Good. How about you? I'm doing well. I agree. I had a lot of fun at the ocean. And for me, it's a similar experience in that um, I love seeing the, majest- the majestic waves and how and how calm and soothing it is at the ocean. I just, yeah, I need that every once in a while. It's therapeutic in a way. And yeah, I I feel closer to God. I think that, um, you know, when you're sitting on the beach and all you can really hear are the ocean waves and things like that, um, the world is quiet and it's easier to hear God. Isn't that the beautiful irony of that? Mm -hmm. Like it's loud. Like the waves were huge and they were thunderous <laughs> and yet it was soothing and yeah. quiet. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. You kept saying that to me. I remember when we were sitting there just like, can you believe how quiet it is here? And yet actually it's not quiet. <laughs> <laughs> right. So yeah. So you're doing good? It's white noise. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah. The white, the beautiful white noise of those ocean waves for mm-hmm. sure. Oh, and... We finally got our Christmas decorations taken down, all of them. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> and I was able to dust, finally. <laughs> it was pretty bad, wasn't it? It was bad. It was really bad, yeah. So, yeah, I got my house back a little bit. Got your house back? <laughs> you never lost it. I know, but... Yeah. <laughs> but I get what you're the decorations saying. decorations take over. Yeah. We're sitting in the chairs in the living room after we were done. And I was like, honey, the house is so naked. And you're like, yeah, I love it. I love it. (laughs) (laughs) Well, on this episode, we are going to get into the thick of it, I think. Mm. I don't mean that we're going to drift off into the thick weeds. I think that on life's precious path and journey, we are going to get into the thick mud. Okay. A little bit. It's going to get real. For some of us, I think. Hmm. But before we get into all of that, we want to remind all of you that if you want to support us here at Churchosity, it's really simple. All you got to do is follow us on the socials, Facebook and Instagram. Look for us at the tag at Churchosity Pod. And if you really love this episode, and we're pretty sure that you're going to, all you got to do is share the episode with all your friends. Just click on the link, send it to your friends. And be sure to let them know how much they're going to love Churchosity too. Because the Churchosity podcast personnel is amazing. <laughs> All right, Andy. Yes. You ready to get rolling? Mm, yes. We got some stuff to talk about, don't we? Confession and forgiveness. <laughs> Confession and forgiveness and how they work together. Mm. That's the conversation. That's the, that is, that is like... That is like the the gist of what we're what we're talking about it on these last few episodes, right? Yeah. Our camping verse, uh, in case you don't recall, it's First John chapter one verse nine that says, "If we confess our sins, He is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness." Mm-hmm. We've been talking about some deep stuff these last few episodes, haven't we? Yeah, we have. You know, we've talked about confession. You know, on our last episode, I think we we did a pretty good job, I think, of identifying and defining what we believe the biblical understanding of confession is, Mm -hmm. that we confess or admit our condition, that we're in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves, Mm -hmm. that we confess or admit our offense, that we've sinned in thought, words, or actions. We confess or admit the state of our own heart, the condition of our heart, if you will, Mm. that we have not loved Jesus or others with his love. Mm -hmm. And that when we confess, we're asking for God's mercy and forgiveness so that we can once again walk in his ways and bring glory 
to Him. And that's, after all, it's the goal of the Christian faith, right? Right, of course. Yes. You know, what is the chief end of man? To love God and enjoy Him forever. And part of loving God and His people and enjoying the Christian life forever is dealing with the matters of confession and forgiveness and how they work together. Those those are part of the Christian's everyday life, I would argue. Right. So on this episode, I'd like us to try our best to answer two questions. Okay, what are they? <laughs> well, question number one. Yes. What is forgiveness? Oh. What do we think it is, Andy? Oh, man. What do, what do we as, as humans, as finite creatures, what do we think it looks like? What do we think forgiveness is, Andy? Wow. Well, in Sunday school... <laughs> Shout out to Miss Davis! I was taught that when God forgives us, He remembers our sin no more as far as the East is from the West. Yeah, and that's pretty deep because East never ends. Right. And neither does West. Right. Right? Yeah. And that's great. And we don't, I don't think, we definitely don't have that ability <laughs> as a human. <laughs> I was going to say we, as in you and me, or just humans in general? <laughs> humans in general. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Don't you think it's interesting that when we when we think of forgiveness, that really all we really think about is how God forgives us? Mm, mm-hmm. Do you find it difficult uh, within your own wisdom and knowledge, Andy, to define what forgiveness is, like human to human? I do. Well, I have an analogy. Oh, I am Another all ears. Another analogy. I am all ears. Well, it's kind of like you take a hammer and a nail and you hammer that nail into a piece of wood and then you pull that out and then that hole is always still there. You can't like fix that hole. I mean, I've seen, I've thought of it like I can forgive, but I'm not going to... It's hard to forget. Mm. You know, you might be able to pull the nail out, but that hole is still there. You Mm. know, it's not like that goes away. We don't have the ability to actually forget what happened. Sure. I mean, that would be nice, but obviously we need Jesus' help to forgive someone. Right. And over time, you can create something new with that person. And build relationship again. Yeah. I'm finding that the older I'm getting, that that whole idea of forgetting, mm-hmm. it when, when, when you have to work at forgetting an offense that someone has done to you, yeah. that you're bringing up the past in your mind. Mm-hmm. And, and I love how you put that, that like that hole is always going to be there. And so in order to have a right relationship with someone, the relationship has to do something new. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> I love that. That's mm-hmm. beautiful. Well, on our last episode, we kind of scratched the surface on the subject of forgiveness. You know, we brought up good old Peter. Ah, uh, Peter. You know, we, we, <laughs> we, we talked about, we were in Matthew chapter 18, and mm-hmm. we talked about the infamous church discipline passage and the whole... You know, going to your brother who has sinned against you and confronting them and having that conversation. And and then things kind of take this interesting turn. Mm -hmm. And and Peter comes to Jesus and he asks him something really interesting. And even more interesting is Jesus' response. And it's Jesus' response that really is kind of the meat and potatoes of what we want to talk about on this episode. So, Andy, um, if you wouldn't mind... I, I think mind. I'm going to throw it over to you, and I'm going to ask you to read for us from Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 through 35. Oh, boy. Okay. And in case anyone is is wondering, uh, we are reading from what I would consider God's translation, oh, which dear. is the New American Standard. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> okay, here we go. Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 through 35. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times? And Jesus said to him, I say to you, up to seven times, but seventy times seven. For this reason the kingdom of heaven shall be compared to a king 
who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he had begun to settle them, one who owed him ten thousand talents was brought to him. But since he did not have the means to repay, his lord commanded him to be sold along with his wife and children and all that he had and repayment be made. So the slave fell to the ground and prostrated himself before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will repay you everything. But the lord of that slave felt compassion, and released him and forgave him the debt. But that slave went out and found one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And he seized him and began to choke him and said, Pay back what you owe. So his fellow slave fell to the ground and began to plead with him and said, Have patience with me and I will repay you. But he was unwilling and went to throw him in prison until he should pay back what was owed. So when his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were deeply grieved and came and reported to their Lord all that had happened. Then summoning him, his Lord said to him, You wicked slave! I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not also have had mercy on your fellow slave in the same way that I had mercy on you? And his Lord moved with anger, handed him over to the torturers until he should repay all that was owed him. My heavenly father will also do the same to you if each of you does not forgive his brother from your heart. All right, thanks for listening to this episode, everyone. (laughs) That's pretty deep stuff, isn't it? Right, exactly. You know, uh, one of the things, one of the many things that I love about the way that Jesus communicated with his friends (laughs) was how real he kept it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like there's, I'm just going to say, there is so much going on in this passage of scripture yeah right for the sake of this conversation we're going to deal with the obvious because i i i really i really believe that this parable that jesus tells here Mm -hmm. really speaks at the crux of what we're trying to get at here on this episode Mm -hmm. because the question is what is forgiveness right what does it look like exactly i find it really interesting that immediately after Jesus kind of walks the disciples through this process of how to be reconciled to one another, you know, in in verses 15 through 17. It's almost like Peter gets it, right? Like, Mm. like, like I, I just kind of infer from Peter's question in verse 21 that he gets it. Like, you know, I've been a real jerk to my brother Matthew. And on behalf of the other 11, I'm going to come to you and speak for everyone and say, Okay, Lord, I get it. Um, how many times is my brother allowed to sin against me and then I'm expected to forgive him? Like up to seven <laughs> times? Like a seven times enough? <clears throat> right. And Jesus says to him, I don't say that you forgive him up to seven times, but 70 times seven. Wow. Like... Technically, that's 490 times, right? <laughs> that you forgive someone for the same sin, right? Right. right. Like, basically, uh, <laughs> you never stop being in... You never stop having a heart of forgiveness for the Ex- person. Exactly. Right? That's the point, yeah. And I could just imagine in that moment, like, Peter having this, like, deer-in-the-headlight look, like... Jesus, that's 500 times. Mm. Like, uh, could you unpack that? Like, what does that look like? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You, ever, you ever had somebody say something to you and you're like, um, like, I hear what you're saying, uh, but 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 I, I need to make sure that you really did just say that. So could you like expound a little bit on that? Could you unpack that a little bit for me? You know, mm. you know that look? You know what I mean? <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah, I know. And so Jesus, you know, partly because he's God and partly because he's human, he he hears Peter and he's like, all right, I'll unpack it for you. Here's what it looks like. Mm. Right. And he compares the kingdom of heaven. He, he compares the, 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 the people of God. 
He says, in, in my kingdom, amongst my people, it's going to look like this. You know? Mm. And, and then he just embarks on this story that's ridiculous, right? I mean, you have, you, have this, you have this master, you have this lord that has slaves. And one of the slaves, uh, you know, he's, he's settling up debts. You know, which is which is kind of provocative. You know, you have you have this master who's like, you know, it's been a good year. I'm feeling nice. I'm going to bring all of the slaves that I own or that I manage or that I'm the Lord of. And I'm going to let's see, you know, let's bring them in one at a time and, and see what their debts are. Right. And so you got this one guy who comes to the Lord and it's and it says in verse 24 that when he'd begun to settle the debts there was one who owed him 10,000 talents now just food for thought a talent was worth more than 15 years wages whoa and, and this man owed his lord 10,000 talents so do the math <laughs> That's, How did he lose that much money? Wow. Well, I mean, it doesn't say that it's money. It's just the the value of the debt that he owed. Mm. That that comes out to over 150,000 years of wages. It's like an eternity, right? right. Like, it is, this is an unpayable debt. And I just, I just, you know, I read that and I just have to wonder, like, what in the world did this guy do to be that much in debt to his Lord? Yeah. I mean, he's never in, he's never in his lifetime ever, he's never in 10 lifetimes going to be able to pay this back, hmm. which adds so much gravity to the fact that in verse 25, it says that since he did not have the means to repay, well, duh, <laughs> since he didn't have the means to repay, his Lord commanded him to be sold. Yeah. And then the slave falls in verse 26. The slave falls to the ground, prostrates himself like face down in the dirt before him and says, please have patience with me. Have mercy on me. And I will do the best I can to repay you everything. Please don't throw, don't sell me. You know, don't, don't sell me and all, and all of my family, right? As, mm -hmm. as a form of payment to your debt. And then it says in verse 27, the Lord of that slave felt compassion. And released him and forgave him all of his debt. Wow. Like, just imagine how, in that moment, to have this, like, insurmountable amount of debt forgiven. Mm hmm Like, in that moment, how this man must have felt. Right? Yeah. You would think that he would immediately be transformed... And his perspective of the human experience completely changed. And now he's going to look at his relationships with his friends and other people differently. And he's going to behave differently. It's going to change who he is by nature, right? You would think. You would think. Yeah. Oh, but no. No. What, is the, what does this guy do? Well, he goes out and he finds one of his buddies who's also a slave that owes him a hundred denarii. Now, food for thought, a denarii was one day's wages. Okay. So if this guy owed him a hundred denarii, he owed him three and a half months worth of wages. Mm. It's a hundred days wages, right? Yeah. Compared to the over 150,000 years of wages <laughs> that this guy owed his master. Right. This guy owes him three and a half months worth of wages. Mm. And you know... Like, let's be real. Like, it, like, like, if you're in debt to someone, like, if you, like, if you, like, if you're back, if you're backed up on your rent or on your car payments or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Three and a half months, like, you could get a, you could get a second job or a third job, or you know, you can cut out the cable, you can cancel your <laughs> Netflix. Like, like, there's the possibility that if you owed somebody three and a half months worth of wages. You could figure out a way. You could put together a plan to pay all that back, right? Yeah. So, in other words, you know, uh, owing a hundred days worth of wages that's that's pretty easy to pay off. Certainly, it's a heck of a lot easier than what the other guy owed his master, right? That's true. Oh, but no, <laughs> he's not going to accept that. 
No. You know, the same guy falls to the, I mean, this, this guy who owes the first guy money, you know, he falls to the ground and begins to plead with the guy, have patience with me, have mercy with me, and I'll repay you. But, verse 30, he was unwilling and went and threw him in prison until he should pay back what was owed. Hmm. And everybody's watching. Everybody's watching. Mm-hmm. Everybody sees what's happened and they're grieved. And guess what they do? They go back to the Lord and tell him everything that had happened. So the Lord summons the guy back in and he's like, You wicked slave. I erased the debt that you owed me because you begged and pleaded for mercy. Shouldn't you have also shown the same mercy to your friend? To your fellow slave in the same way that I had mercy on you. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's de- that's deep. Yeah. Right. Why did you not have mercy on the guy that only owed you three and a half months of wages when I forgave you ten lifetimes worth of debt because you asked me because you begged me to. Wow. Right. And so he punishes him. He sends him. He sends him to the torturers. He sends him to the people that are going to beat the debt out of him, essentially. Yikes. So Jesus tells his story. And then he finishes in verse 35 by saying, My heavenly Father will also do the same to you if each of you does not forgive his brother from your heart. Mm. Well, let's put this whole thing into terms that you and I can better understand, Andy. Okay. Because, you know, 150,000 years of wages, like, that's kind of hard to figure out, right? (laughs) Like, that's like trying to, you know, on the salary that you and I make, try to figure out, like, what our monthly mortgage payments would be on a $10 million house, (laughs) right? It's probably about, like, what Bill Gates makes in one day versus what I make in one day. (laughs) Like, 10 minutes. Yeah, exactly. So let's just let's just boil this down. Let's let's translate things into 2023 real numbers. Okay. Okay, as best as we can. Okay. okay? Uh-huh. Let's say that that this guy owes his master a million dollars. All right. Like what if you and I, Andy, hmm. owed somebody a million dollars and they came Ugh. calling to collect on that debt? Right. You see what I'm saying? That'd be rough. Listeners, what <laughs> if you owed somebody a million dollars? Yeah. And for however long you thought that it was just kind of flying under the radar. And then one day, one day, that person comes calling to collect on that debt. And they forgive all of it with no strings attached. (laughs) Woohoo! Well, it's more than that. (laughs) Like, it would change your life, right? Yeah. What a relief, you know. I mean, yeah. think about people who win the lottery, mm-hmm. right? Like, mm-hmm. what must they be thinking? Oh, I can pay off all my debt. <laughs> well, that's what I would be thinking anyway, right? The other guy in 2023 dollars, yeah, he owes 10 grand. Okay. At most, we'll say. Yeah. He owes 10 grand. Like, you know... Uh, you, you cut out this, you cut out that, you save this, you save that, you, you, you don't eat out at restaurants for a few months, you know, whatever, right? Mm-hmm. It's 10 grand. Like, like, he could pay that back. Yeah. But this guy won't forgive him any of it. Mm-hmm. And the master finds out. And he reapplies the debt. The debt's back on you. That million dollars. You owe me that million dollars again. (laughs) After it had already been forgiven. And he throws him into prison and punishment until the debt is paid back in full. Hmm. I mean, that's intense. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. You want to know how much importance God places on our forgiveness of each other? Look at that story. Mm -hmm. I mean... Think about what he has done for us through the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. He has atoned for our sin, a debt that we owe him. There is a debt owed to God because of how sinful we are at our core, how rotten we are at our core. It's unpayable. It's unpayable, yeah. Mm -hmm. He's forgiven 
an insurmountable debt that we owe him. That's the atonement. He's paid for, he's paid the penalty of sin Mm -hmm. and the eternal separation from him. Because just like that slave, we recognize that we were unable to free ourselves from what we owe. Let me say that again for the people in the back of the room. (laughs) Just like that slave Mm -hmm. who owed an insurmountable debt, we recognize, we came to the point where we beat our chest and begged and pleaded for the Lord's mercy. Rescue me. I'm a sinner. Yeah. We're unable to free ourselves from what we owe. Hmm. And he does it. God does that. Mm Mm-hmm. He forgives it. He wipes it out. As you said, Andy, as you as you grew up learning in Sunday school, that when God forgives us of our sins, he remembers them no more as far as the East is from the West. But what if we don't forgive others in the same way? Mm. What if we don't forgive the ridiculously low-grade offenses done to us? Because let's be honest, Andy. Yeah. The greatest offense that somebody else might impose upon any one of us is nothing compared to what God has forgiven us for. That's the truth. The debt that God has erased from our existence. Mm. You mean to tell me, according to this parable, that God takes back his forgiveness and our debt is reapplied? Possibly forever? Hmm. That that kind of floors me. Because on the one <laughs> right. hand, we know that God is faithful and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We know that he remembers our sin no more as far as the East is from the West. That's all true. But the cost of being a sinner, the debt that we owe for being a sinner, gets reapplied. Mm. He doesn't remember the sin, but he reapplies the penalty for it. You want to do it your way? Then you get to deal with it your way, essentially. Hmm. Because catch this. What? Matthew 18, 35. My heavenly father will also do the same to you if each of you does not forgive his brother from your heart. From your heart. Hmm. That's the key. Okay, I take back my... my analogy. Why? <laughs> I want, well, you know, when I forgive, I should work to forget also. I think I just need Jesus's help to do it. I mean, I think about the prodigal son and how he came back to the father and the father didn't dangle anything over his head. Mm-hmm. He welcomed him with loving and open arms and celebrated the fact that there was reconciliation. Mm -hmm. And I mean, if somebody comes to you and they want to be reconciled to you, Mm -hmm. you should never be pointing at that hole that's left from the nail. Sure. Uh, You know, but notice what had to happen before that reconciliation. The father had to let the son go and do his thing. That's true. And get stuck in his mess. Mm -hmm. before he came to his senses right that's the grace of god that's the mercy of god Mm -hmm. god is in the business of giving us what we ask him for if we tell him i want to do it my way guess what he's gonna let you yeah and one day hopefully you will come to your senses we'll come to our senses Mm -hmm. maybe it's in the pig slop we have an episode about that sometimes it takes pig slop (laughs) Yeah, that's true. And we come to our senses and and we realize how pathetic we are Yeah, because of how selfish we are Mm. at the core. Scripture says in the book of Jeremiah, I believe it's chapter 17, verse 9, somewhere in there, that the heart is wicked and dreadfully sick above all things. Who can possibly know it? We have to replace that wickedness and that sickness in our hearts with a heart of forgiveness. You see, whatever it is that Peter or any of the other disciples was holding against Matthew, you know, that he was a tax collector? Yeah. That he had worked for the Romans and was skimming off the top for himself? Mm -hmm. Whatever it was that Peter or any of the other 11 were holding against Matthew, it was nothing 
compared to the debt that Peter or the other 11 had been forgiven mm-hmm. wow. by their God. It's intense when you think about it. Yeah. You know, just think about, you know, ladies and gentlemen, listeners of Churchosity, think about the people in your life that you're mad at right now. I'm giving you permission to do it. <laughs> think about how you feel about how they have offended you, what they have done to you, right? Yeah. Flip that around. Think about the people that you know you've offended and how that has damaged your relationship with them. Whether you are the offender or the offended, whatever has taken place is nothing compared to the debt that all of us has been forgiven for by God. That's true. I mean, what's worse, a million dollar debt or a $10,000 debt? How much easier is it for us to go, you know what? I'll give you some time to pay me back that 10 grand. You know what? I'll give you some time to work this out because I want to be friends with you. Mm -hmm. You know what? I'm not going to hold this against you. You know what? You screwed up. We all screw up. I screw up. I lose my temper. You lost your temper. Whatever it is, (laughs) we're going to let it go. It's all good. Mm -hmm. But yet, it's so hard for us to do that. Hmm. So that's question number one. What is forgiveness? Well, forgiveness is recognizing that it's from the heart. That's right. We have to have a heart of forgiveness. Which leads me to question number two. Okay. Do people owe us an apology? Hmm. You can just hear the Jeopardy music right now. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because immediately in my humanity, I'm going to say, well, yeah, if they did something bad to me, they owe me an apology. Well, I don't know. I, I would like to think that they would apologize, but I think what we owe them, we owe it to them to tell them what they've done to offend us right oh i'm so glad you went there thank (laughs) thank you for saving the conversation andy let's go back okay let's go back to matthew chapter 18 Mm -hmm. the infamous church discipline passage Mm -hmm. verses 15 through 17 shall we sure all right if your brother sins go and show him his fault in private if he listens to you you have won your brother But if he does not listen to you, take one or two more with you, so that by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every fact may be confirmed. But if he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. So, Andy, um, I'm going to take a minute here Uh and just... Like, because I'm looking, yeah, and I'm looking for where it says that um, I'm supposed to wait for them to apologize before I go talk to them. <laughs> right? Yeah. I'm being flippant, uh, I, but it's not there. I know. Right? Like, it's not there. Mm. I mean, yes. Uh, somebody does something to me that I don't like, they should apologize. I mm-hmm. do something to somebody that they don't like, I should apologize. That's a matter of the heart as well. Like, I got to own my stuff, right. right? But, you know, forgiveness, it's its conditional. I mean, we're supposed to have a heart of forgiveness, but there's a condition. Like, you have to present the opportunity for an apology and then reconciliation and forgiveness, I mean, every single one of those steps in the process of reconciliation, even though each layer, each level gets more intense because you start off where it's a one-on-one conversation and then it's a two to three-on-one conversation and then it's the whole church against one in a conversation, right? Yeah. The issue is repentance. The issue is that person who has committed the offense, Mm -hmm. whether or not they're going to own it, right? Yeah. Yeah. If your brother sins, go and show him his fault. And if he listens, there's the condition, if 
he listens to you, you've won your brother. You've won, you've won the day with your relationship. You go to your brother, you say, hey, there's this thing, let's fix it. And they go, you know what? I'm a piece of garbage. You're absolutely <laughs> right. I am so sorry that I did that. Will you please forgive me? Absolutely. You dab it up and you move on. Mm-hmm. Right? Right. First John 1 John 1.9, our camping verse. If, there's the condition, if mm-hmm. we confess our sins, then he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There's a condition in forgiveness. Mm. But what's unconditional is that our heart needs to be full of forgiveness. Yeah. That's the difference between forgiving and forgetting. There's the act of forgiveness, and then there's the heart of forgiveness that forgets. Mm-hmm. You don't hold it against them. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, they have yet to apologize, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna harbor bitterness in my heart towards them. I have to have a heart of forgiveness. Now, depending on the situation, depending on the circumstance, that does not suggest that we allow others to walk all over us. That's a different conversation. That's a different podcast. We'll get into that some other time in the future. Okay. But we always have to be cognizant of our own heart condition. Mm -hmm. Because ultimately, that's what God is looking at, right? Yeah. The issue here is the words if and go. If your brother sins, if we confess our sins, if our brother sins, go so no people don't owe us an apology we owe them the opportunity to know how they offended us Mm -hmm. that's what we owe we the offended are the ones who owe something here people aren't mind readers what of course not who's going and why The offended person is going. Why? Because they want reconciliation and for the relationship to be whole. Well, I'm not going to forgive them unless they come and apologize for what they've done to me. Hmm. How many times have you thought that? How many times have you said that? I know I have. Many times. (laughs) Please don't hear me say that I have cornered the market on this and I'm perfect in all ways when it comes to this. (laughs) What if they never knew what they did? Hmm. Well, Anna kicked me in the shin. She ought to know what what, <laughs> what she hey, did. Hey, you said you forgave her. <laughs> in the first grade. You said you forgave her. <laughs> I, I Anna, did if you're listening, <laughs> uh, maybe Andy owes you a phone call. You I don't know, know. For all I know, I did something to make her mad enough to want to kick me in the shin. Ooh. That's the problem. I mean, Well, you I... beat her to the drinky fountain. Yeah, well. Well, you know, to a fifth or sixth All grader, that's a big do. deal. Or first grader, first right? First grader. To a first grader, that's a big deal. That's your world. I got to be first that's to the drinking true. fountain. That's probably true. Well, what if they never apologize? Even if they know mm-hmm. what they did to you. Hmm. Matthew eighteen fifteen through 17 still stands. Yeah. It trumps your feelings about it, right? Mm-hmm. If your brother sins, go and show him his fault. If he doesn't listen, take one or two more with you and go back. If he refuses to listen, go and tell it to the church. Like, like even, even though in the context of these verses you're talking about getting to the heart of sin and disrupting a relationship within the body of believers, the body of followers of Jesus Christ, it applies at the one-on-one level too. Because I don't see a footnote there that says, oh, this doesn't apply if we're just dealing with a one-on-one situation. Ah. Uh-huh. Forgiveness begins in the heart. Remember Matthew 18 verse 35 says, forgiving them from your heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There is a difference between the act of forgiveness and the heart of forgiveness. I have a story that I'll try to tell quickly that I think kind of drives home this point, right? Yeah. Like if, if you're a new listener, you don't know this, but I'm a big football guy. I coached football for 19 years. I coached kids from four and a half years old all the way up to seniors in high school. Like I coached a lot of kids, a lot of different ages. This one particular year, I was coaching eight and nine-year-old boys. I was the head coach, and I had an amazing offensive coordinator. And he coached with me for probably nine of those 19 years. Mm -hmm. Phenomenal guy. Love the man. He and I both 
had the same passion for the game, the same love for the game, and the same love and consideration for the kids that we coached and their families. It was great. Mm -hmm. The difference is our personalities were very different. The way that we demonstrated or spoke that love to the boys was different. Mm -hmm. Mine was more of class clown. You know, I was a goofball. Like I, like I was, I was the fun meister, if you will. My offensive coordinator, all business. So I had this one kid on the team who started at one of the running back positions, and he needed a little extra work. You know, to to I mean, my my offensive coordinator, he was a perfectionist. Like he he would put a cone out on the grass, and he would say, "You run to that spot." And if you didn't run to that spot, he made you do push-ups. Like he was that serious, right? Right. And there's nothing wrong with any of that. That was his expectation. And you know what? At the end of the day, that year, our team went undefeated and won the championship. The results are there. But it's all about the how when you communicate, right? Mm -hmm. This kid felt like his offensive coach didn't like him. Oh. He felt he was hurt mm -hmm. by the way that coach talked to him. And so this boy and his mom approached me in the parking lot, said, you know, Coach Heath, you know, this thing happened and coach, you know, the offensive coach said some things and, and, you know, my boy is kind of concerned that maybe coach doesn't like him. And I was like, nothing could be further from the truth, but you know what? I'm going to have coach talk to him. And I, and I looked at this young man and I said, would you be willing to sit down with coach and, and. You know, if I create a space for you two to have a conversation and he, he was like, well, sure. Yeah, because that's like the security that we had in our team. We yeah. could be real with each other. Right. Even yeah, from player good. to coach. It was an open door policy, if you will. Mm -hmm. So I went home and I called up my offensive coach and, and I let him know the situation. And he felt absolutely terrible Aww. because that's not his heart. Mm -hmm. He's he's not a mean guy. He's just all business. Right. Mm hmm. And he was, and, and what what he was upset about was not that he got tattled on. <laughs> he was not upset that that person didn't come directly to him and tell him. Mm -hmm. He was upset at himself that something that he did had broken or potentially could break a beautiful coach player relationship that had been established over the course of three years. Oh wow! So the very mm. next day at practice. This coach took the initiative and went and found this player and they took a walk and they went over and they sat down next to the fence and they were over there for about 15 minutes. And I'll tell you right now, I have no idea what was said between those two. I never asked mm -hmm. either one of them. But you know what I saw? What? Those two hugged Aww. and it was like nothing ever happened. And that kid flourished and went on to have a successful football career all the way up through high school. Nice. See, that's the heart of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. We must have a heart of forgiveness. It cultivates reconciliation. It creates space where confession and forgiveness can happen on a regular basis between each other. Hmm. Andy? Yes? Some of your favorite verses that you like to visit and revisit on our show... Yes. Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 and 13. Would you read those for our lovely listeners real I'd, quick? I'd love to. So as those who have been chosen of God, holy and beloved, put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving each other. Whoever has a complaint against anyone, just as the Lord forgave you, so also should you. Oh, those verses are just so beautiful. <laughs> I mean, it just it just spells it all out there, right? Yeah. You know, because we've been chosen by God, because we're holy, because we're his beloved, we need to put on that heart that is compassionate, that is kind, that is humble, that is gentle, that is patient. We need to forgive each other. Whoever it is that has a complaint against anyone, that's everyone. <laughs> because we all offend each other. That's everyone. I love that. That's so true. <laughs> Just as the Lord forgives us, we should forgive each other. Mm -hmm. And then one more section of verses from Ephesians chapter 4. We love the Apostle Paul, don't we? Yeah, we do. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 31 and 32. Andy, would you read those for us too? Sure. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander 
be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ also has forgiven you. Mm. Kind of the same message over and over again. I know. <laughs> I, I think that there's this recurring message, you know, but catch that in verse 31. Let all bitterness and wrath mm. and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you. See, that's how we want to react. We want to be bitter. Mm. We want to be full of wrath and rage. We want to be angry. Clamor and slander. We want to make noise and talk <laughs> badly about the person that hurt us. Uh, Why can't we do that, Andy? Uh, yeah. <laughs> and we're malicious about it. We're in methodical. A, we plan to do it. In our humanity, it makes us feel better. For yeah. A minute, for a second. And then God says, Mm-mm, be kind to each other instead. Yeah. Be tenderhearted. Mm. Forgiving each other. Have mm-hmm. that heart of forgiveness. Just as God in Christ also has forgiven you. Mm -hmm. The moral of this story, ladies and gentlemen, is that reconciliation and forgiveness, they go hand in hand. Because you can't have one without the other. And that's all we have to say about that. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Churchosity Podcast. The show where we try to give you the Gen X take on church culture. And thank you once again, as always, to my phenomenal co-host and amazing wife. Oh, you're welcome. Be sure to follow us on all the socials. That's Facebook and Instagram. Our tag is at Churchosity Pod. Drop us a message and give us your feedback because we'd really love to hear from you. And if you happen to be listening to this episode on either Apple Podcasts or Spotify, please be sure to give us a rating. And if you feel like it, you can also give us a review. Your ratings and your reviews not only help popularize Churchosity Podcast, but they make us a whole heck of a lot easier for other people to find us. And you can also help spread the word about Churchosity Podcast by just simply telling a friend to tell a friend what we're doing here. Yeah, let them be a part of the conversation too. But always remember that the goal of our instruction is love. From a pure heart. And from a good conscience. And a sincere faith. So we thank all of you for listening, and we hope to catch every single one of you on the next episode of Churchosity Podcast. Peace.